All right. Hey, my friend, welcome to today's episode where we are going to talk about overcoming intrusive thoughts. And today I'm going to use an analogy of having a bunch of mud in your backyard to help you understand it. And so uh, before we dive in, please help us out by liking and subscribing as well as leaving a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, the founder of Restored Minds. And uh, if you're looking for help with OCD and anxiety, I have some resources down in the notes. Or you can head over to Restored Minds and uh, and check out some of our resources to help you uh, really break out of the loop and get back your uh, take back control of your life. So, with that said, let's dive into the show. So, a lot of times, uh, you know, on many people that are reaching out, many people that um, watch the show or, or uh, listen, uh, a lot of questions I get are about intrusive thoughts, and in almost every case the person is reaching out about a specific kind of intrusive thought. So that might be an an intrusive thought about harm. It might be an intrusive thought about self-harm. It might be an intrusive thought about uh, one's sexual orientation or this intrusive sexual thought of like, what if I become a pedophile or intrusive thoughts about God, intrusive thoughts about um, doing something blasphemous, one's salvation, um, intrusive thoughts about committing the unforgivable sin, I mean, you can kind of really lump them into three main categories, right? The intrusive stuff around harm, violence, intrusive thoughts around sex, or intrusive thoughts about one's religion and faith, and even existential ideas and whatnot. And, and they they can also like, you know, crisscross and, you know, they, they tend to get together and mate and, you know, branch off into all these other creative ideas. So, um, what do we do with intrusive thoughts and how do you overcome them? It's essentially the question. And I want to eliminate the idea of uh, talking about a specific theme today, because I think at the end of the day, it becomes, it becomes a little counterproductive. I should say, no, it just becomes counterproductive because ultimately when we get focused on the theme, we're still validating the idea that this theme, even though it's in the category of intrusive thoughts, matters and it's somehow different than the other ones it's more important therefore and it's harder to treat than this theme and so on and so forth so we're just really going to talk about the idea of intrusive thoughts altogether and what we need to understand about intrusive thoughts is our mind directly corresponds our emotional state and how we identify something as an intrusive thought to begin with is really uh analyzing and 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 understanding the energetic or emotional state of the individual so, for instance, when someone is in a, a, you know, when I ask people, hey, when that are having intrusive thoughts, say, hey, what do you feel? Almost every single time the answer is fear, right? And so a lot of people ask, well, how do you know it's an intrusive thought? And it has to do with the corresponding energy or the emotion of the individual, right? So uh, if someone's having a thought that's harmful in nature and they're in alignment with that, like that's not an intrusive thought to them. Um, you know, and if they don't feel bad or they don't feel any problem with that, that's a different situation altogether. That's not for this video. Uh, you know, if you're experiencing something like that, then you need to, um, seek the appropriate guidance and services because this is about intrusive thought and it's in the essential category of OCD and anxiety. And really what we're talking about are these thoughts that are ego dystonic meaning that the person recognizes these are not things they want to experience. These are not things that reflect who they are and they're having them essentially invade their consciousness. So, or at least that's their perception. So when we understand this idea of fear, what you understand is fear is really at the source of thought, right? Or our emotional state is that essentially the source of our thought. And our mind is oftentimes creating thoughts to justify the presence of an emotional state in our body. So when someone has an intrusive thought, what is really going on is there's a heavy sense of usually fear at the very core of it, right? And this leads us to the analogy of mud. So let's pause the intrusive thoughts talk there and let's flip into an analogy where let's pretend you walked out in the backyard one day. And all of a sudden it was just filled with mud, you know, like it was fine the night before. And all of a sudden it's just mud everywhere. And you look at this and your perception is, is this is a mud issue. I have a bunch of mud, right? So you might even start Googling about mud and how to get rid of mud and all this other stuff. 
and then you might actually put a lot of effort in. You might start digging out the mud with a shovel and throwing it into the neighbor's yard, right? Um, or, you know, whatever. And, and then, or putting a bunch of sawdust down or trying to, um, you know, essentially do everything you can to absorb the mud and get rid of the mud, right? And if, as long as you're focused on the mud as the problem and you perceive the mud to be the issue, you're always going to try to solve the mud as a problem. And what you need to realize is, is that the mud, it, and let's pretend in this situation that the mud was actually caused by a neighbor up the street, you know, maybe the water line in their house broke and this water is leaking right into your backyard. So the mud in this situation is not actually the problem. It's a secondary symptom of the main problem, which is this water line is leaking directly into your yard. And if you're trying to solve the mud issue all the time, and you're just focused on the mud and you're trying to get rid of the mud, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you're going to ignore the real problem, which is the water that's leaking right into your backyard causing the issue. So the way to solve that from a higher context and from, you know, the correct way, you know, is to actually not worry about the mud issue and actually worry about stopping the water line. And if you're able to stop the water line and get that fixed, no more water would leak into the backyard no more mud would form and essentially, eventually the mud would dry up. You wouldn't even need to actually do anything. Well, in many ways, intrusive thoughts <clears throat> parallel this really well because so many people get focused on the mud. They, they, their perspective is when they look, the mud's there. I'm having this intrusive thought. You know, I am experiencing this specific theme. Now it went to this theme. Oh my gosh, now my mind's saying this. And they're just caught day and night in the mud. And the, the water source in the parallel is really the stored fear in the body, right? Or really the fear that you're carrying in your body uh, that really is the source of a lot of the intrusive thinking, right? And what we need to do is actually be able to bring our awareness and confront the feelings underneath the thoughts that we're really actually running from, that we're scared of, that we're trying to get rid of, that we're trying to avoid, suppress, medicate, escape, <clears throat> all that stuff. And when you understand this, you begin to work at intrusive thoughts correctly because you stop taking the thoughts themselves as the issue and you start looking at the source, which is actually the fear, the anxiety, the essentially kind of trapped energy in the body, in the nervous system. And when you begin to not get involved in thought and actually work on learning to let go of and release in many ways a lot of the fear in the body, uh, what happens is the mind tends to follow suit. And as you shift your emotional state and your energetic state by letting go of a lot of the lower emotion that's in your system, uh, the mind will follow suit and tend to calm down. And it's not about solving the mud. It's about really moving into the source of uh, what's causing the mind to be so disruptive and invasive. And a lot of that is the the stored energy and the stored emotions in the system. So um, just a, another way to consider this. And again, this analogy really, it, you know, the whole point is to really ask yourself, like when you wake up in the morning, are you focusing on the mud problem or are you moving to the source? And as long as you focus on the mud, what you got to realize is you're going to ignore the actual source and perpetuate the mud problem. So hope this was helpful. And, um, you know, I hope you're able to use this in your daily life and, and begin to shift how you're working at this and begin to work at this from a, um, especially if you deal with intrusive thoughts, that you begin to work at it from a level that's actually going to produce um, fruitful results for you. And obviously, if you're looking for help, if you align with this, um, I would really encourage you to head over to Restored Minds. Um, you know, we have several resources for you at various levels of your journey. So uh, please check that out as um, I really think you'll benefit. So thank you so much. And again, I wish you a great week, great day, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Hey there. So if you enjoyed that video, we've linked up a few more videos that we think you'd find helpful as well. And if you have found this helpful, we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing. And if you're looking for help and guidance, please check out restoredminds.com as we have several options for you to get started. See you guys soon.